folks, it is a great time of life to read big books. And not only because a lot of us are self-quarantining right now, but always read more books, read big books, challenge yourself. Anyway, I've been meaning to film this video for a while. Um, Ariel Bissett in early 2020 posted a reading big books challenge for the year and I thought I definitely want to do that. So I've been slowly either collecting or bringing out some of my old big books to read in 2020 and maybe this year and maybe, maybe next year. And now it's mid-March. The whole world is basically close right now and we completely understand why it's self-isolation it's protecting ourselves from spreading a very contagious virus that hurts people so it's a good time to stay indoors be crafty be reading doing all those things that we say we're gonna do and now we're stuck at home so why not read big books so I have a stack of big books I'm going to talk about and these are books I know only want to read in 2020 but if I don't read them this year I want to read them in the future. So here's some big books I have wanted to read for a long while. big book for a while and it's paperback so it doesn't look that big but it, it really is and it's called A Distant Mirror The Calamitous 14th Century and if you don't know a lot about European history that's totally cool um, but the 1400s was a bad year they had plague they had the English and the French fighting a lot of bad things going on I'm like reading the back of the book and it's like the 14th century let me read the back of it to you the 14th century reflects two contradictory images on one hand, a glittering ages of crusades, cathedrals, and chivalry. On the other hand, a world plunged into chaos and agony. That sounds familiar. <laughs> In this work, Barbara Tuchman examines not only the great rhythms of history, but the grain and texture of domestic life. What childhood was like, what marriage meant, how, many, how money, taxes, and war dominated the lives of serfs, nobles, and clergy. Granting her subjects their loyalty, treachery, and guilty passion, Tuchman recreates the lives of proud cardinals, university scholars, grocers and clerks, saints and mystic, lawyers and mer mercenaries, and dominating all of this, the knight. In all his valor and furious follies, a terrible worm in an iron cocoon. Anyway, this sounds like an engaging history read. That's what I'm like thinking it will be. And Barbara Tuchman also has written The Guns of August, which is another one of my big books that's on my list of big books. I have it bookmarked on Goodreads to read. So I'm holding up this book, but I actually, with this book, comes The Guns of August, which is a history of World War I. And that's also a book I want to read. Isn't it interesting that she's written two hard times in history, World War I and the 14th century. And right now, the 2020s, have reminded a lot of us of like the great flu epidemic pandemic of 1919 and um, World War III with the conflict we had in January and this has been a hard year already so I think when I'm having a hard time processing the historic ramifications of everything going wrong around me reading how people survived 600 years ago when life was kind of hard harder than it is today because they didn't have the comfort of social media of a working dishwasher and washer and dryer when they didn't have the like that and they lived so like it can be it can be fine today even if it's really rough people have survived worse how long was it is this book this book is 698 pages so it definitely qualifies as a big book it is it's enormous it's gonna be a lot of heavy reading Book number two for my big books is a book I've owned a very long time and it's called In These Times, Living in Britain Through the Napoleonic Wars. And if you know a tiny bit about me, you might know I love Jane Austen and Jane Austen wrote during the Napoleonic era. So I have always really enjoyed the Napoleonic era. I love the Jane Austen movies from Emma to Pride and Prejudice, both 1996 version and the 2006, 2004, one of those years, uh, the newer one, the old one. I love Jane Austen. I, my favorite Jane Austen is Emma. I'm going to watch the new Emma soon, hopefully. And I have been looking forward to reading this book for a very long time. It was a Christmas gift for my uncle who knows I love British history. He knows I love the Napoleonic era and his beautiful pictures that I just discovered. Look at these people, they're so handsome. Maybe you don't think they're handsome, but maybe you don't have taste, I don't know. Um, I just really love 
a good history book and that is exactly what this is and i i think the napoleonic era in the conflicts between napoleon and the british empire is very interesting now i'm not an imperialist imperialist i don't support the idea of colonialism and the british empire but it is a fascinating time in history to study despite my moral objections to it also um very long it is at least 621 pages the end and then you have a notes section that looks like another 100 pages so all in all it's at least 700 pages so when i talk about big books this this book qualifies and i don't know why i've never read it i love the napoleonic era i love the like the the sheer gentility of british nobility at the time in the middle of a global conflict i think that's a great contrast and also at the time you have great political movements that are happening the french revolution has just ended 1793 is when this book starts 1797 is when the i think the end of the reign of terror so uh it's officially maybe the reign of terror is like mm, it's complicated about when it all ended and when it started but 1787 is obviously when the american constitution was written 1789 is the fall of Basti the bastille and then 1791 1792 is the start of the reign of terror and then napoleon takes over and it's like complicated super wacky my favorite my favorite 15 years in history right there and i love how things in britain people think there wasn't a revolution but there was there was a political revolution where you have the abolition of the slave trade you have like the first idea of the rights of the working class and it's a very like boots on the ground kind of political movement where women and um middle class people are like let's take back the government for ourselves and then that i'm not a big fan of the victorian era but before then i loved like I love what's going on in Britain. I just love it. And I cannot wait to read this book. What is that? I don't know, but that's my excited face. Another era that I enjoy reading about. My favorite, as I said, my favorite time in history is um, the French Revolution and the 15 years around it. And another era that I enjoy reading about, it's not my favorite time in history because it's a tragic era in history, but it, I have always enjoyed reading books about World War II. And Disblended in the Wild by Eric Larson is one of those the new book it came out this year or late last year and it definitely counts for my big books it is 582 pages and this is about the churchill family during the blitz and how the british people stood up to the nazis during the blitz when literally they were being bombed every night so when you talk about quarantine and we're all like stuck at home they were stuck at home waiting for bombs to fall on them so like definitely a much worse era in history and i recently saw a meme of a celebrity who was complaining that they were stuck in their house all day in their million dollar mansion and someone said remember Anne frank survived in a cupboard for two years so you can stay inside and that's kind of the way i feel about like when people complain about being stuck inside yes we have mental health concerns but being inside to protect those we love in our community is not as bad as being inside while bombs are falling on you or when your life is threatened if you're caught and you will be exterminated for existing as a human being. So much worse era in history. And um, I have wanted to read this book for a while. I think Eric Larson writes gripping nonfiction. I loved Dead Wake. It's a hard book to read because you know everybody on board the ship is about to die, but Dead Wake is good. And um, I can't wait to read this. I have another video where I talked when I first got it from Barnes and Noble. So if you haven't watched that video, I have it linked below and you will know my goodness, I was very excited to pick up this book from Barnes & Noble and I am very excited to read it. Looking forward to great nonfiction. We love nonfiction. Okay, a book, a book, a series, a collection that I've been meaning to read a long time that's definitely over 500 pages is The Iliad by Homer. I have read The Song of Achilles and I basically think that's all I need to know about The Iliad, but maybe I should read the original source and not just a retelling of Achilles and Pat Patrocles. So I need to read this and I don't even know how long is this translation? Let's see how long it is. It is 650 ish pages. So it's definitely counts for my big books. It is poetry and I did not know that when I bought it because I'm an idiot and I never studied classic literature in high school. So I bought this and I was really surprised. I was like, what, this is poetry? How am I gonna read poetry? I don't know how, um, but I'm excited to try it out. I mean. The titles make me happy. Hector returns to Troy. Um, where's, where are we? Oh, this one's sad. This is a sad title, y'all. 
especially if you've read the song of achilles you know what i'm talking about um this is sad anyway i'm excited to read this book it has been on my reading list for a very long time and i just need to bite the bullet and read it and then i can pretend to be an educated snob because why else would you read the iliad a book that has been on my radar of books to read for so long and then i started the movie and it was weird and i was like what's going on i need to read the book first to understand the complexity of the story anna karenina by leo tolstoy this story is set in russia and i also want to read his other books set in russia that's set during the napoleonic era anyway aren't all of his books set during the napoleonic era no because this book has trains so at least i think it does so I'm pretty sure it's not set during the Napoleonic era. Anyway, I want to read this book. It is massive. It's beautiful. I just bought this edition from Barnes and Nobles. It's over 700 pages. It's a classic. And then I can enjoy the movie because now I'll understand what the heck is happening and I'll understand the tragedy. I am also reading this retelling of Anna Karenina and I think this and this needs to be read together. Like how can I really appreciate the retelling until I read the original? So I'm gonna read both of these, I think. This is not a 500 page book, so it doesn't count for my big books challenge. But this does, and I have been, this has been on my like bucket list of major works of literature to read for so long that I just, I just need to do it. Like 2020 is the year that we're gonna read this and we're gonna be happy to read this and then I will tell my grandchildren that while the world fell apart, I read Anna Karenina. What better legacy to leave my grandchildren? Will I have grandchildren? Maybe not. Maybe climate change will kill us before then. We'll find out. I'm excited about this book. This is also part of my 500 plus big books challenge and I didn't know it was going to be massive when I bought it, but book Twitter was talking about it. I finally picked it up and I am talking about Crescent City by Sarah J Mass and I'm going to have a reading vlog of reading this book and it is over 500 pages. It is 780-ish pages, so almost 800 pages. So it really does count for my big book challenge. It's not nonfiction. It's not a classic. It's pure 21st century adult fiction. So I should enjoy it. <laughs> but also will it be like good for my brain to read it we will find out but book twitter has enjoyed this book i've heard a lot about the main character people talk about her i think her name is bryce and people seem to think she's pretty epic so it doesn't hurt to to read it doesn't hurt you know um i have really no idea what this book is about except i've heard it is about fairies in the modern world so it's different from our other sarah j mass's other books because it's set today i think or in space. I feel like this is like a space opera book. We'll find out. Anyway, I think Sarah J. Mass is a complex author in that she writes fun books, but after I walk away from them, I'm kind of disappointed in myself for reading them. So I hope that's not the case with this book. I hope I don't devote 800 pages to something I don't enjoy. Well, we're hoping for the best, folks. Really hoping for the best. Those are my big books for 2020 that I want to read. Now, some other housekeeping items. I also would like to read The Great Gatsby because I've never read it before, but I haven't bought it yet. And I don't know if it's under 500, over 500 pages to count for my 500 pages reading. And I have one book that I would like to reread in 2020 that I listened to as a child and loved. It's over 500 pages. It was a 15 hour audiobook. We listened to it on a road trip as a child and I fell in love with the story, but I have not ever read the actual page copied book and I need to read it. I need to sit down and have that experience of reading it. And so I'm adding it to my big books challenge, even though I've already read the story. And I'm talking about Watership Down from Richard Adams. And I just realized it's only 450 pages, so it doesn't quite match my big book challenge, but I'm going to add it to my big book challenge. And also this is a very worn copy of the story, as you can't tell. I found this at a bookshop in Philadelphia, right down the street from the Philadelphia Public Library, which is a really cool building that you should go to. It has this really historic vibe, musty kind of vibe, and the public library was really cool. I also bought my Percy Jackson books there, and I picked up this book, and it is so worn, and I love it. Um, if you don't know about Watership Down, let me read it to you. Watership Down, a novel by Richard Adams. 
They lived comfortable and secure in the best of all worlds, until one of them had a vision. He saw the hillside that was their home covered in blood. Prophesying imminent destruction to all who remained, he and his brother appealed to their leader. They were dismissed routinely. Obedience and death faced them. Or rebellion and survival, maybe. Watership Down is a picturesque saga of a maverick band who set out against all odds on a quest for a new home, a better society. How they succeed is an epic adventure and a compelling contemporary odyssey of leadership found and leadership lost. The heroes of this tale are animals. They are wild rabbits. Their behavior is consistent with nature, yet everyone is endowed with a blood and gut personality that is unforgettable. The full-bodied characterization and compelling plot fuse transcend the animal world and illuminating man's great humanity and terrible inhumanity. The setting is England, the rolling hills and meadows. The, the time is now or tomorrow or always. I love this story so much and I really want to read it in 2020. I am put off reading it because I know the story and I think I will not commit or like not keep reading it because I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm at this, I remember this spot and I won't keep reading it because it's so big, like it's a big book to reread. Um, and I miss the audiobook and I wish I could find my cassette tapes. Yes, they were cassette tapes, they were very old cassette tapes but I can't find it my parents can't find it so I have to read it I can't listen to it so oh my goodness also there is a map in this story a map of the hills of England where these rabbits live because rabbits are people too anyway no they're not but we'll pretend how far could rabbits travel I guess I'll have to actually read the book again to figure out how many miles it was. As a child, it felt like Lord of the Rings. Like they were just traveling and traveling and traveling. That's what it felt like. But we'll find out. I'm gonna read this book and I'm gonna remember. Can't wait. Oh, another big book that's on my list of big books. We're not gonna forget this. I just saw this on my shelf and was like, oh yes, East of Eden by John Stainback. I picked this up from Goodwill and I've never read it. And it is one of the books from the 1920s and we are in the 2020s today. So we're gonna read this because it is about 100 years old. I forget when it was exactly published. Let me look at the copyright. So no, it wasn't published in the 2020s, but I thought staying back was 2020s, 1920s author. Whatever, I'm dumb. Obviously I didn't take, I, I taught myself in high school. I don't know if you know this, but like I taught myself, printed out my high school diploma, took the SAT and told my, told my college application people that I graduated. And basically like my high school was like a very rocky career because I, picked up books and read them and that was what I'm saying I'm I made up my own grades and GPA because <laughs> life <laughs> trauma that's a story for another day but yeah I don't I never took literature or anything so I feel really dumb right now um because I thought this was published in the 20s and it was published in the 50s but what yeah whatever it's almost 100 years old we're gonna read it in 2020 that is the plan it is over 500 pages, so it fits my big books. Okay, last big book was this one. We're done talking about big books because it's been 20 minutes of me talking to y'all and the sun is setting, so light is going away. Also, don't you love this like daylight savings time lighting situation? I'm, I'm a fan. Who needs a ring light when you got this? Who needs a ring light when your budget doesn't have ring lights? Um, thanks for watching, y'all. I appreciate you, and I hope you're staying safe. Keep your loved ones healthy and well um enjoy all the creative pursuits indoors enjoy reading enjoy taking walks six feet apart and um i will see you guys later if you would like and like this video and subscribe i would totally appreciate it also follow me on instagram because i need motivation to keep making creative content on instagram because i've not been very motivated lately and i will see you guys later see ya Sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service.